as well. My name is Jamie Fenn and today I'm going to show you how to do a freeze frame effect. Now you probably have seen it where someone does an action and you see the freeze frames after the fact, but in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the complete opposite. It's a really fun effect to do, it's super easy, and we're going to do this in DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump in there and get started. So here's a clip that I have. This is Ryan Nangle. This is footage. You can download it if you want. It's down in the description. And this is just a clip of him jumping off a cliff. You can have any clip as long as there's some movement in it. And you can try this on, you know, all types of different clips that you have. But this one specifically is really nice because what he'll do is he'll basically just flip into himself like he did in the intro. So the first thing you want to do is find the clip, drag it into your timeline, and basically use the playhead to kind of scroll to the point where you want him to kind of, you know, go into himself. So like, like right here could be cool. So I'm going to select the clip, and then I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, depending on what kind of computer you're on. Drag this clip up here, and we're going to basically just duplicate it. Then we're going to come up to the clip at the top here and select freeze frame. Next, we're going to want to highlight both those clips and right click on one of the clips and create a new fusion clip. Then make sure the playhead is over the clip that you want to do the effect on. Then come down to the fusion tab and select fusion. So by default, the clips are now appropriately on top of each other if you do it like that in the timeline. And so just to make sure that the clips are set up correctly, you want to hover over your merge node and make sure that the background is the one that is moving and the foreground clip is the still frame that we're going to use. And as you can see, this is now the background because we set it up correctly. And I'm going to just drag this up here because it just kind of makes more sense in my head. I'm going to then push F2 and rename these because I like to stay organized. I'm going to name this one still. And then I'm going to name the one below it live. So I'm going to put the still clip in viewer window number two. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the polygon tool. And that's right here. That will automatically connect to the still frame and by default, the polygon tool is not really showing anything, but if you actually click on the invert selection over here, it will show you your clip. That way it's a little bit easier to kind of, you know, mask out what you're trying to do. So next you want to zoom in and you want to mask out the subject. So I'm going to do that real quick. So once you've done that, you'll have something that looks like this. The reason it looks like that is because we have the mask inverted. So next, I'm actually just going to come back over to the selection that we put before, then click invert, and now we have our still frame masked out. So the next thing we want to do is I'm going to put the median out here and put it in viewer window number two so I can see everything that we've done so far combined. Now, I'm going to select the live clip and I'm going to hold down shift and press spacebar and type in planner tracker. So on your clip, it's very important to be able to have something you can track the still frame to the whole time up until the point where he will basically kind of just fall into himself. And so what I want to do is make sure, you know, if you do move the playhead by accident and it's like out of frame, it's important that we have these matched up because what we're going to want to do is track backwards from the exact point that we have the still frame. 
We don't want to go further or before. We want to make sure it's perfectly lined up. In the frame, I know that this is constantly here. And so this is an area I'm going to track. So I'm going to just basically select a square here. And then I'm going to come over here to the operation mode. And under reference time, I'm going to set this as our reference point for the track because this is where the track is going to start. Then under the tracker, I'm going to select hybrid point area. Under motion type, I'm actually going to do translation, rotation, and scale. Each one of these will work differently. It just depends on your shot if the camera is moving forwards or backwards or left and right. You know, if it's on a tripod, but for this, this worked fine for me. So I'm going to select translation rotation and scale. And then what I'm going to do is come down to these buttons right here. And each one of these does something differently. This button right here will track all the way backwards to the very beginning of the clip. This will track backwards one frame by one frame as you click it. This will stop the track. And this one will track frame by frame forward to the end of the clip. And this will just kind of one click and go all the way to the end. I hope that kind of makes sense, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I click here just one time, It'll track just that one frame. Now when I click here, it's going to track to the beginning. So as you can see, DaVinci lost tracking right here. So what I like to do is come over to the single keyframe tracker button and just click a few to go backwards and then continue to track to the beginning of the clip. Usually the tracker does really well in this case, but you know, sometimes you run into an issue like that and that's kind of my workaround. So now that we have the tracking data for the still frame, we want to create a node with all that data that we can attach to the still frame. So I'm going to come down here to create planner transform. And what that does is it creates a new node and we're going to delete the original planner tracker node because we just don't need it anymore. And I'm going to click on this and hold down shift and just kind of drag it down. When you see the line turn green, it will automatically connect the two. It's kind of a shortcut that I always use while using Fusion. And now if you look at the clip, you can see that our still frame is now matched up, works really well. But now the problem is, is that we have this left over and it just doesn't look good. He's just sticking around. So we have to go to the point where the still frame will match up with him. And to get the effect of him kind of falling into himself, we want to go to the frame that we have matched up with the still frame and come and click on the polygon tool. We're going to keyframe him out essentially just right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the level here and I'm going to keyframe the level by pressing the keyframe button while this is matched up. And then I'm going to move one frame over to the right by using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And now you can see he's kind of like, you know, the next frame over. So you're going to want to turn this all the way down. And now he will have that exact effect of falling into himself. Now check this out. And voila. So what's really cool is that you can go into your edit tab and when I created that still frame, you can actually create a still frame, maybe three, four, ten of them if you want, depends how much work you want to do. But you could create a still frame right here, then you could do one where I did it, and then you could create another one here. You know, highlight all of them, make a new fusion clip, and do this exact effect for each still frame. So you could have multiple people or multiple subjects and have them fall into himself multiple times throughout the clip. I just did this simple effect for the example. So anyways, there's a playlist right here linked. If you like these kinds of tutorials, there's a bunch of visual effects I do, transitions. And if you like what I do, please like and subscribe. Turn on notifications. Comment below if you actually use this effect. Maybe link me on Instagram, tag me, and let me see what you're working on. It'd be really cool. I'll come check it out. And have fun with this, you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.